ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the deciding game number three here in our series between Dignitas taking on Millennium in the semifinals of uh, Chaos TV's presentation of the Riot Turkey International Invitational number two. I am Rapid. I'm joined by Metas here for the final pick and ban lobby of the night. Indeed, this will be our final game regardless of what happens for tonight and the winner of this game will go up against Copenhagen Wolves in the grand finale on Sunday. So, so much to play for in this 10,000 euro prize pool tournament all on the line here and as you say, this is the third game. Shivana, Aatrox, Lee Sin, Corky and Ari have all been banned out. Honestly, I have no surprise at all for that Corky ban. It, both games, it's been played, it's won and it's actually carried. So. Millennium don't want any of this. They don't want that Samwise 14 for zero Corky again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. No questions asked about that. Uh, the performance so far from both Samwise and Shlaya has been absolutely impeccable. Game one was all Samwise all the way. 14-0 and 5, I think, was the score. Uh, but for Shlaya in that last game, an 11-1 performance, just ridiculously uh, powerful. It just completely ended that last team fight. Uh, took out two carries off the bat and then followed up by, uh, well, he picked up his last kill off of, you know, a fountain dive. But either way, getting into game number three, Dignitas with first pick this time around will ban out Shivana, Aatrox, and Lee Sin. No love for I'm So Fresh, but also banning out Doig Lee as well. Completely understandable after that last game. That is, however, going to leave Elise open. And um, with five seconds to go, they may lock this in. Switching over to Renekton. And they will be locking in the Renekton on Nitrix. This is a character he's very comfortable on in top lane. So certainly an understandable first lock-in. And so to start things off, yeah, Nitrix back on that monster of a Renekton in the, the game that we were only that we were unable to show you, game number one between Dignitas and Millennium. Nitrix's Renekton was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. 7-1 and some odd assists at the end. And just absolutely, uh, not necessarily carrying, because of course it's hard to carry when Samwise is 14 and 0, but at the same time, a great front line that allowed Samwise to carry as hard as he did. And in game number 3, the deciding game of this set, he will have that champion once again, Millennium. Opting for the Teemo, probably not. We'll just go ahead and lock in the same bottom lane that's been so strong for them all series long. It's going to be a Caitlyn and Thresh. Oh, they're trying it's, to troll it's you. It's going to be a thresh, okay? <laughs> I'm resistant to their trolls. They are super ineffective against me, as it were. As I'm not sure what element is resistant to troll, but I'm out there to find it. Well, rapid, you know, just resistant to troll all day, all night. And it will be thresh, seemingly like they listen to you there, rapid. You're not going to take any of their BS there. And it is going to be Caitlyn Thresh at the bot lane. Now over to Dignitas. With Corky not being available, it's going to be interesting to see what they pick up against Caitlyn. I've seen a couple of Varuses maybe in this situation being used. I'm not too sure if that's going to be the case here because Samwise does love himself, Corky and Caitlyn. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a real head scratcher for me actually to see what they lock in. Now, yesterday, Curse Academy, a challenger team from North America, ran a Southeast Asian strategy that involved a Fiddlesticks Trindamir bottom lane to counter out Complexity, one of the strongest North American challenger teams, uh, Caitlyn Thresh lane as well. This time around, it's looking like uh, won't see something quite that non-standard as it will be a Zyra support. Still a mystery on the AD carry as Corky has been banned out. Won't see him. Dignitas, we'll have to look towards something else. Yep, it could maybe be something like an Ezreal as well. I, I'm just not even buying into that Draven, honestly. Um, I, I don't see it happening. It is possible in the sense that they ran an AD, a double AD comp in the first game that we casted Rapid with these two, but it didn't work, and that time it was Caitlyn and Vayne. Now, I, I don't think in the all-important third game they're going to go with the duo AD carry composition again because it's very, very easy to counteract that, especially when you have a Renekton who is naturally very tanky and an anti-AD carry himself. There we go. Lissandra makes a lot more sense. All right, I'm a believer. We saw a good performance from Nitrix's Lissandra in game number two, but it really never got to that sort of, hey, I'm going to run up to you, nuke you in place, and now the rest of my team burst me down. Uh, that combo worked a couple times, but Doigby just got so tanky on Lee Sin that when he was there for the initiate, you could lock him up, but it just took too much to kill him. 
and allow the rest of Millennium to snowball in for the win. Now taking that pick away from Nitrix, putting it up against his Renekton though, is a formidable task for just about any champion, but still keep in mind that last jungle pick saved for last for Millennium. We'll know exactly what they're going up against. Band out Zed left Cassidy open. It looks like that will be the pick for Alchemist after a strong showing in game number one. So it is going to be the Ezreal, um, which is a similar kind of champion to Corky. And what I mean by that is similar kind of build and similar kind of positioning required in fights, whereby Valkyrie, Arcane Shift are get out of jail for free cards, basically, as an AD carry player. So it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that they've gone with an Ezreal and a Zyra lane. Level 6, lots and lots of burst damage from the Strangle Thorns and also the Arcane Barrage. And it's, it's not going to surprise me if we do actually have that Rengar being locked in, to be honest. Because it's, it's so strong in Europe right now. Well, it would be a jungle Rengar, unless we saw a jungle Shen. I mean, not for doing B. Uh, the Renekton pick top lane is what I'm worried about right now because Rengar's early damage and early strength is pretty ridiculous in lane. The only problem is that Renekton has a little bit of that himself. And so changing things up, it's uh, looking like they're choosing between one or two top laners, either Rengar or Kha'Zix so far need a jungler, unless it is a jungle Shannon with that Kha'Zix held over until the very last second. It's going to be locked in. Do you taking that one away for Doigby? I think that they were thinking right to the last second there whether to go with Rengar or Kha'Zix because they both fill a very similar role of assassination. Just pure assassination. With Rengar Thrill of the Hunt, you go in and you just nuke one of their players. It's Ezreal or Kassadin. And it's a similar kind of story with Kha'Zix as well. Especially if he starts to get fed, the resets in team fights allow him to just hop around the team and nuke people here, there, and everywhere. It looks, however, though, it's going to be a Kha'Zix jungle. So, okay, interesting. You know, the, the teams aren't allowed to switch champions after the 22nd mark, so there it is. 20 seconds Kha'Zix jungle, left. yeah. It's Schleia playing Shen. So he'll be playing probably an off lane because Millennium are expecting to put Nanook and Jude 2v1 versus Alchemist Cassadin. Now, 2v1 and Cassadin works very well, but Schleia, he's taken the exact opposite approach of game number two and is now going to be playing a super tank, whereas Doigby now in the aggressive AP mid roll playing a Lissandra. So nice to see them kind of switching up their roles a little bit, but the Kha'Zix jungle, in the season four jungle changes, carry junglers work a lot better. I think we've all seen screenshots that some of the pro players have posted of their own uh, you know, training for season four, but I'm, I'm, I'm so fresh, like we mentioned earlier, plays literally everything in the jungle, makes crazy things happen, and today it's going to be a jungle Kha'Zix for Millennium. It's quite interesting as well because it's the same kind of idea that they had in game number two with trying that one versus two lane against LeBlanc, which effectively got re-rotated and ended up backfiring on them. But as you say, Cassidy really struggles in one versus two, especially against Thresh and Caitlyn. But we are going to see how this works out for both teams after this two-minute break that we currently have on the delay. So when we rejoin us, we'll be live for game number three, the all-important third game in this best of three between Dignitas UK and Millennium. Don't go any Anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the last game of the evening here at the Riot Turkey International Invitational number two. I am wrapping along. Side me is Metas. We're gonna get this game underway. It's gonna be Hero dropping a ward for Team Dignitas. And of course they are taking on Millennium in the blue Millennium in the red, but Millennium looking for a late invade onto the blue buff. Won't run into Dignitas just yet. Yeah, and it's also important to note that this is the all-important, decisive third game in a best-of-three series. The winner of this game will go to the grand finale to face off against Copenhagen Wolves for 10,000 euros. So that goes to show what's on the line here between these two teams. It all comes down to this. Somewhat of an unorthodox composition for Millennium, but we saw last game they played LeBlanc. The game before that, they had a double AD comp. So these guys are not afraid to kind of dip their toe in the water and see what happens. And so for right now, to start things out, it will be Nitrix walking the long way around his jungle. I, I, I wonder if Dignitas are assuming the blue buff invade after so much pressure around their red. I think they were prepared for red, but without Nitrix actually checking the blue buff, won't be aware of this just yet. And so it'll, it'll be really up to Impaler. If he goes straight for his blue buff, he's going to be very far behind. But you can actually see Schlaya checking his own blue buff. And this is something that Nitrix probably should have done, probably will realize it now as uh, Impaler finishes off the red buff. And is he going to look for his steal? Yes. Okay, he is going over towards Millennium's blue buff. It's going to be found out there by Dude. But a very early gank attempt from I'm So Fresh coming through. The Ignite comes down as well. Instant flash from Nitrix. If they can pick up this first blood, it's going to be huge. And it's on I'm So Fresh. It's on the Kha'Zix. And that is going to allow him to snowball very, very quickly. He's going to be a real danger to the side here of Millennium. Uh, sorry, to Dignitas UK, I should say, after getting that first blood. Really nicely done. And nice to see Nitrix. They caught him level one before he had skilled Slice and Dice, which is a skill that makes a lot of Renekton's really, really rough uh, to gank. And they hit him before the uh, the gank timing he was used to. That was a two minute, 30 second gank, while you're usually used to about 3.30 after double buffs. Taking to you, taking down a lot of damage. There's the Ignite, last auto attack, dude. Going down, Yero takes him out and one for one as far as jungle ganks are concerned. One for each team, the only difference is we got I'm so fresh starting the carry train rolling. When were they Spirit Stone instead of Madra's Razor? So we'll be looking for either a tanky Kha'Zix, which probably wouldn't be the right way to go, or still going for that Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Yeah, I would expect to see the Elder Lizard coming out here because you certainly don't pick a Kha'Zix for his tanker tankability and his survivability. You pick him to crush enemies. And with that first blood, he is going to be looking to be very, very aggressive. Has the XP bonus on top of everything else. So it's going to be going down to his blue buff right now. And uh, we'll be able to pick up some more CS. Both duo lanes in the mid. 
something that uh, kind of went past us because of that first blood being picked up at the top lane. But that being said, it's going to be Shen against Cassidy in a bot lane. That's not something we see a great deal of in terms of, uh, kind of one versus one situations. Now Shen versus Kazan should go very well for Shen, uh, able to use the early game, but there's the mid lane, Yarrow gonna take the last auto attack from the Nook, and it's Shlaya coming in for the gank, and we'll see, I'm so fresh, looking to jump onto Impaler, no, it's just gonna check the wolf camp, it's not up, blue buff actually is not up either, as uh, there was one small minion left there by, uh, by I'm so fresh on his first trip by the buff, the Nook pretty low, but we'll be able to stay in lane a little bit longer, just thanks to that early kill on Yero. Yep, so looking pretty good for Millennium right now. Remember, they were 1-0 down in this best of three after Dignitas UK snowballed the first game, so they're on a bit of a roll right now. Momentum definitely in their side, in their side of the court. And uh, right now, Thresh coming back to mid lane. Alessandra against Renekton top seems to be going fairly even after that first blood. So Renekton's done a nice job of catching up on CS. But again, Rapid, you can see that I'm so fresh is hungry for another kill. And catching Nitrix out a little bit earlier on, it came back to lane and is now only about half a level behind. Yeah in experience compared to Dorgby. Now Dorgby is gonna push out this lane and actually allow I'm So Fresh to get into the second bush. Coming behind Nitrix, still doesn't know what's up. Has to know something's up and immediately you can see Impaler, they're ready to pounce for the counter gank. So much damage coming out and I'm So Fresh actually gonna get a locked out there by the cocoon. Nitrix just with a health pot ticking lives with single digit HP. Actually around 20 or 30 HP, but still cutting it extremely close and actually Calls for the dive, no, we'll just back away. Nitrix once again though, forced out of lane. Yep, Thresh thinking about coming to top lane and trying a tower dive, but instantly pots the ward down, just backs on towards mid. So not gonna be happening. But even though they didn't get the kill onto Nitrix, they forced him back again. And that's gonna alleviate some of the XP from Lissandra and allow her to get a bit further ahead. And also, in terms of CS, you can see a 15 CS differential right now with Elise just pushing this lane really, really hard. So it's quite difficult for an actor in that lane because Lissandra's coming back to the lane with three Doran's rings. Pretty scary to face off against. Now, I would have liked to see something along the lines of maybe a Brilliant Elixir for, for Renekton. If Renekton were in Doigby's position, uh, you'd see him come back with like a Red Potion just to just dominate the early game, completely crush it home. But the Triple Doran's Rings is actually something we saw from, I believe it was Alchemist? Uh, or no, it was Schleia in game number one. So it's just sort of a, hey, I'm building for early game. There's not a lot you're going to be able to do against me. And as Renekton, a champion that's not noted for his very strong early game, uh, that's a pretty strong statement to make, but with all the pressure that I'm so fresh has been getting off there, I actually see a long sword in the inventory starting to stack up almost there to the spirit of the Elder Lizard. Yep, I'm just gonna have a quick look at bot lane because it hasn't really got a lot of love thus far. A great deal's happened, but in terms of CS, that's 48 to 39. So Shleia is having a pretty good time of it, plus that assist. Then he managed to pick up in the mid lane on top of that. Kazakh's hiding around the edges right now. There is going to be a ward if he so chooses to push through the mid here. So he has been spotted. There we go. Vision ward is right below him. Dark Passage comes across, but honestly, Dignitas are just way, way too cautious to even try and test their luck. But immediately off of that, dude, it's going to need to go away and pink ward? No, he regular, ooh, regular ward of pink. So it's just a vision ward in there. It's going to be a death sentence. Hits onto a plant. Will not be able to get in there. I'm so fresh. Goes in. There is imp or Impaler for the counter gank. No boots there for fresh. He's going to have to flash after this. He does take the dark passage away after the Shen ult. So a little bit missed time. Shlaya taken in mid. Yeah, I was going to say that it's better to be safe than sorry, but I don't feel a Stan United was required there. As uh, Shalea actually whiffs his uh, taunt and will just be stood in place with a bit of egg on his face. But yeah, Stan United wasn't necessarily required, but as I said, kind of better to be safe than sorry, Rapid. If, if he'd not fired off the Stan United and I'm so fresh had died, there probably would have been a few words exchanged between them on team speak. Yeah, I can't imagine that would have gone very well. I'm so fresh, pretty low there. He's gonna actually try for double golems too, so that could 
I don't think he can actually do that. He's gonna drop down too low. It's 15 HP. He has 15 hit points. He gets the minion kill with a smite. Holy cow, that was bad. That was a little bit too close for comfort. I was scared. I'm so precious got it in the bag. <laughs> He's probably uh, acting all cool, like calculated. I knew I was fine, but that was really, really close there. It would have been a bit of a, a face palm moment as well because he has the red buff. So had he have fallen there, would have been completely uh, wasted red buff that still has three quarters of its duration remaining. So it would have been a bit of a, a power play against him. Regardless though, has kind of reached a bit of a lull in the action with most of the lanes just happy to farm their way up. And uh, thus far, maybe Dragon's going to be the next point of contention. Taunt lands on Alchemist, but he's going to be just fine. He's a level 8 casted and Rift Walk to safety whenever he so chooses. With that level 6, like you mentioned, he's going to be pretty safe in lane. But uh, the, the difficulty, the danger for Millennium comes from their side lanes. And as I'm so fresh, has been able to kind of prey on those early on. Setting Nitrix pretty far behind the triple door hands ring start. For, uh, for Doigby has been working so far, but it's kind of a race against time as Nitrix will be picking up a Giant's Belt. Same thing for Shlya. They're building the armor for a Sunfire Cape into an AP matchup, so the damage will always still be there for Doigby and Alchemist. I'm just wondering what the, the passage of play, what the game plan is for both these teams right now. Obviously Kha'Zix, uh, I'm so fresh, wants to get farmed, he wants to get fed as well, so he can turn into that really scary Kha'Zix that everyone fears to play against. In fact, they're going all in on Diode here, who is going to be just fine and, and pull his way across, repelling from Elise, and we'll just be planting back down, checking if red buff was there. And in the meantime, I'm so fresh is going to use that opportunity to steal away the blue buff. So lots of counter jungling coming in here from Kazakh. Uh -huh. He's being sneaky in the meanwhile, and actually looks like he'll be just fine. Secret agent, I'm so fresh makes it allowed <laughs> alive with the goods. It's going to be waiting in the tri brush. He's going to come top lane. Actually uses his leap in there, and with the wave clear, won't quite be able to take down the turret, but does take that blue buff away. Another taunt landing on Alchemist, just a harassment more than anything else. Schley is taking a fair amount as well, but have a look at Dignitas UK's movement. They are congregating, they are congolining their way towards that dragon. Four players strong, this looks like it's going to be a free Drake question. Now, will the duo of Nanook and Diod just push through mid? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to get the tower. So in that case, I'm going to say, nice play from Dignitas, just jumping on that opportunity. So he's going to be Impaler, dropping down pretty low, but the action is in the top lane. I'm so fresh, jumping in, has Shen there to back him. Shalaya tries for the flash taunt, can't quite find it. Will be pulled up there to the top lane, but off of his pressure, top turret will fall. Millennium take down the first turret of the game. Yep, so not only was it a potential kill on the cast Millennium, but it was a, a guaranteed ironclad tower. This, however, will give Cassadin Alchemist a chance to get some free farm at the bot lane and try and push it as well. So every cloud has a silver lining from Alchemist's viewpoint right now. But that being said as well, you've now got Millennium starting to converge on this mid tower, which is below half of its hit points. This could get sticky right now for Dignitas UK. If that death sentence had landed, they would have gone all in. They very well well, might still do so, with Lissandra occupying the left-hand side. Who shot Barrage comes up, clears the creep wave, and they should be fine. This push should continue for Millennium in the mid lane, as that middle turret only has about 600 HP left on it. Uh, Shalaya returning to the bottom lane in time to keep Alchemist from killing off the turret, but more than the turret, the, the, uh, the threat from Alchemist has been a Kassadin with free farm in the early game. Uh, there's actually a Shadow Dash landing from Shlya stops Alchemist back there. Shlya with a lot more sustain in lane, or just sustain period, versus Alchemist who will be forced to rift walk. Now he's gonna head his way back to base. Middle turret will fall, that's the first two turrets. Or Millennium kind of expected with that aggressive thresh Caitlyn combo, but at the same time, Dignitas are going to have to answer back. They certainly will, especially as Millennium are now pushing this bot tower on top of everything else. And none of these outer towers are actually that weak. The weakest is bot lane, which is around 50% hit points. Apart from that, though, pretty healthy. So it's difficult for Dignitas UK to push some quick objectives and get that global gold rolling in their pockets. And indeed, that will be the third tower. And honestly, Rapid, this is very reminiscent for me of that second game where Millennium took charge and just forced the, the fight against Dignitas UK and really dictated the pace of the game. 
Yeah, it does remind me a lot. The only difference this game is that while that early gank from I'm So Fresh, a little bit cheesy, took out Nitrix and gave an advantage over to Doigby. This time around, oh, actually, I'm So Fresh, gonna get locked up. There is the Stranglethorns getting the knockup, and Paler tries to go away. The hook actually lands on to Samwise. Box will continue to slow to come in. I'm So Fresh crashing him down now to zero and two Millennium Massacre at team fight three for zero exchange. As optimistic as I like to be in casting, this game could be over very quickly if Millennium keep their foot on the ground and keep pushing that accelerator down. They've already picked up three towers, that's a 2 for 0 Kazakh, uh, Kazakh so I should say, and that's a 2 for 0 Caitlyn. Together they are absolutely devastating, and they already have the map presence, and this is really where Kazakh shines. If he's pushed back on his own towers, in his own base, Kazix really doesn't have the room to make the huge plays. But if you're able to have a team that is very good at diving past towers, that's where Kazix really begins to shine. And you've got to say, you've got a Shen and a Lissandra to tower dive. I'm So Fresh is completely freed up in team fights to completely destroy whoever he so chooses. That's a really good point about having dive that isn't reliant on the jungler. A lot of teams will just say, hey, we're going to have a tank top lane, a tank in the jungle, and then run damage in other lanes. But for Millennium's comp, they actually put Shen mid and have the Kha'Zix. Just that this time it's a jungler. And if if I'm so fresh, we're 0 2 0, this game would be going completely the other direction. Because as Kha'Zix, if you get behind early on, there's no way for you to get the resets that are what Kha'Zix relies on so much in team fights. But because he's had such a highly successful early game, he's always going to be a presence, which you don't necessarily expect from Kha'Zix in the jungle, just because of that lack of CS. Completely. Definitely agree with everything you just said, because Kha'Zix is a high risk, high reward champion, right? Because if he goes behind, he's going to struggle, and that's what I'm talking about back in his own base. He doesn't have the same kind of strength as he does in these kind of situations, and you can see that I'm So Fresh is trying to push his boundaries. He's gone in for a couple of blue steals already, and that play at level 1 was preordained. It was called in Champion Select, I'd imagine, on the loading screen. We'll try and steal blue, we'll try and get an early gank on Nitrix before he has slice and dice, and then I'm going to snowball the game. And so far, their plan has been executed to perfection, and already you can see the big items coming out on Kha'Zix. That is a Spirit of the Ancient Golem and Brutalizer. He's going to be cutting through everybody, and at the same time, he's actually pretty damn tanky for 16 and a half minutes through the game. And at least for right now, yeah, I didn't expect the Brutalizer. I thought it, like we were talking about earlier, I thought it was going to be a Spirit of the Elder Lizard. But as that item has been nerfed quite a bit, I like them, I like him going for the health and the tankiness because because he's so far ahead, he's still going to be dealing damage, and especially with that Brutalizer buy. This is a very interesting build for I'm So Fresh. It's got the effectiveness from armor penetration, the cost effectiveness, the Spirit of the Ancient Golem, and that will actually allow him a little bit of extra tankiness to kind of dive into fights and survive long enough to get the reset. I think the, the Spirit of the Ancient Golem is twofold. One, he wants to be tanky so that Cassidyn is not able to insta-give him and pop him out of team fights. And secondly, I think it's a declaration of intent to say, we want to tower dive you. I have a Spirit of the Ancient Golem. He has just been caught here, actually. Stranglethorns instantly comes down as well, flashing out. Meanwhile, Doigby and also Duyid from the side are going to be putting down their AoE damage. Box comes out. Nitrix is very tanky, however, but that beautiful Shadow Dash from Schleyer resetting this fight. Doigby flying in again and Lunuk at the back of the fight and somehow some way after all oh, hell oh breaks my. loose nobody has died and that's really a testament to the skill level of both these teams. No, I'm so fresh was forced to leap and dash away and there's actually the alchemist going behind the turret Shlaya getting locked up there's the change CC death to come for Shlaya does go down Nitrix to pick up the kill and the middle turret first turret of the game will go to Dignitas. A minor misstep from Schleyer, recalling that, honestly. He, he could have just walked another 10 meters or so and been fine behind the sanctuary of his inner tower. So a bit of a mistake, and it is going to cost them a dragon, and uh, also that middle tower, as you said. So, you know, Millennium were in the driver's position, cruising down the highway for the first 18 minutes of this game, but now Dignitas UK is starting to claw this one back a tiny bit. They are still two towers and 2,000 gold behind, but... Really, at 19 minutes, that's not a great deal to write home about. 
right now, the only thing to write home about for Dignitas is that they have a huge Kassadin. Huge not because of kills or anything, but because he's been able to do whatever he wanted for as long as he wanted early game. Uh, he has a Rod of the Ages completed, and uh, let's check his gold value. He's got 5,100. That's directly comparable to Schleier, who's actually at about 5,200. I'm so fresh, stealing away a red buff there. Almost sniped out by Samwise's True Shot Barrage, but it does make its way over to Kha'Zix, and you can see with a Null Magic Mantle being built out, I I hope that's not for Mercury Treads. I'm thinking it's going to be for a Hex Drinker, because if you double stack Tenacity, you're not really getting the most out of your items. Yeah, it's not the most gold efficient path to build, but you know, the only time is going to tell here with the builds. Caitlyn has finished off the IE, and uh, as you mentioned previously, Kazix is looking quite big alongside Shen. Lissandra going for the needlessly large rod. I would expect, I'm not sure about you here, Rapid, but I would assume that that needlessly large rod will go into his Oni's Hourglass. So you get that double invulnerability and can be a real pain in the backside in team fights. Especially against Nitrix and Samwise, you're going to want a lot of armor there too. The only other options would be either a death cap for raw damage and burst, and I'd like the death cap or even possibly the DFG. I don't, I don't like the DFG because there aren't a lot of sources of magic damage, so a death cap would actually make a lot of sense because it helps do the damage that I'm so fresh needs to get resets. The only problem is that if you're relying on your jungle Kha'Zix who's not building full damage to get resets, you might get one, but the rest could be a little bit hard to come, hard to come by. And with amplifying tome Dorothy will most likely just be going for that Zanyas. Yep that is a Triforce finished on Ezreal and that's gonna be quite nice amounts of burst damage as I mentioned in the champion select it's gonna be a very similar build between Ezreal and Corky so most players are gonna go Triforce into the Bloodthirster or Last Whisper something like that and then in team fights they're gonna to look to just shred through the opponents. The fact he's gone for a pickaxe first definitely suggests to me more than likely gonna be going last whisper next, which makes a lot of sense here, honestly, Rapid. There's a lot of armor on the side of Millennium. So Last Whisper is a real core item for Samwise in this game. Last Whisper now being completed it's or going to be completed as the next item is still going to fall a little bit behind Nanook, who is just going to go for that straight up single target burst damage build and building up an infinity as looking for a phantom dancer to come up next. It's uh, Do I be wanting to go back to base? I'm so fresh says no. It's going to look for the uh, the damage the gank attempt onto, uh, onto Nitrix who at that very moment chooses to slice and dice in and out will reveal his positioning so uh, Do I be now heading back to base. Uh, I'm so fresh with the timer on the blue buff respawn is going to go in there for it. Just scouting it out. Just make sure nobody is down there protecting it. The rest of Millennium coming back from base except for Nanook and Dude. We're going to kind of go on a little bit of a ward killing treasure hunt. Already finding one. No Wraith camps for their troubles. And you can really see in this game how much both teams have tensed up. And you can't blame them. It is the third, last game in this best of three to get through to the finals. This is semi-finals territory between Millennium and Dignitas UK. And apart from a couple of uh, flurries of furious action between the two teams, it's been quite a slow game overall. Seven kills in 22 and a half minutes is by far the slowest game thus far. But now you can see a big team fight is kicking off. Standing Knight comes in from Slayer and the Death Sentence as well. But look how big Nitrix is. Beautiful box positioning from Dayud, who's now going to be running back towards his own towers. Looks like they should be okay for now. In fact, the cocoon just lands, and it will be a pickup kill onto Thresh as Lissandra is out of position at top lane. Doigby was nowhere near that fight, so a really nice pickup from Dignitas UK. I'm so fresh went in, but once again, Nitric too strong, not enough damage from that uh, jungle Kha'Zix to pick up the reset. It will be a Hex Drinker coming out next from I'm So Fresh, but needed that in the last fight to continue being aggressive and not have to worry about escaping. Actually got out with a little bit above half health points. And I I, I think if he had stayed in there just a little bit longer, might have been able to pick up the kill onto Yarrow, who was the target early on, but did unfortunately manage to escape. And that's just the difference between a jungle Kha'Zix and a lane Kha'Zix. Yarrow would have died instantly if I'm so fresh had been in lane, but trying to get the job done in the jungle, starting to have a few hiccups to his plan. It has 110 CS, so uh, out to uh, about a 20 CS gold 
advantage over Impaler, he will need every bit of that to continue to be aggressive. Yeah, very, very true. Boots of mobility on Kazix as well, so only looking to pick up those kills more plentiful around the map. Schleyer pushing bot lane, and again, we have that fast fl flurry of action, and then it kind of simmers back down again. What I would say is that Dragon is up in 15 seconds, and that it will be live once again. So I could definitely watch for these two teams maneuvering their way in towards the Dragon Pit. Already Yarrow, Samwise, Impaler are on their way down. They can see that I'm so fresh as Kha'Zix is at top lane, and this should be a free Dragon, actually. In fact, it will be. No one's even close from Millennium. Millennium are around the Dragon area, though. They have Oracles in there. I'm so fresh is starting it. Keep in mind, Kha'Zix has incredible damage versus Baron, because the Baron buff, unfortunately, is a little bit antisocial and does not like to have any friends. There's going to be the counter engage straight in on to Nitric. So tanky, will he really go down? He's gonna flash out, slice away, Nitrix stays alive. Flyer taking the front of the damage, and that's exactly what Millennium wants. Very tanky, able to take that without going down. Damage to come back in from Alchemist. The Arcane shift in from Samwise to pick up the kill. Now gonna get ignited. There's a double for Samwise looking to take out Schleia to Alchemist there to pick up the kill. And then Nuke goes down, initiating on a Nitrix siphon. The entire burst damage potential there from Dignitas and now Doigby to go into Alchemist. He's gonna Zonya's the silence out there and look for the counter kill, but not gonna fight it an ace. Five for zero in favor of Dignitas. I, I mean, it's pretty obvious to question that Baron call from Millennium after what just happened, but I, I'm questioning it for two reasons. One, they quite clearly miscalculated the damage that uh, Dignitas UK were able to put down on Dragon and how quickly they could clear Dragon and then go to Baron. And two, they overestimated their own damage on Baron. It was not going down quick enough. And in actual fact, Kazix took so much health uh, as a loss from Baron. It was about half his hit points were disintegrated from Baron even before that fight started off. It was a really questionable call and they just got completely punished. That's a Baron up Dignitas UK now. And uh, apparently Dignitas are asking for a pause because their fire alarm has just gone off. That's that's a new one. I've not heard of that one before. Uh, yeah, apparently this is uh, somewhat difficult to deal with. I mean, communicating while a fire alarm is going off in the background could be somewhat, somewhat challenging. But as all of these players are challenger, I would think they'd be up to the task. But for, for now... We're gonna see the game continue. Uh, before that team fight, it was three to five. Now it's eight to five after five kills going the way of Dignitas, and they went exactly where you'd expect to see them go. Three on a Samwise, three on to Alchemist. Well, in total, not uh, six, three and three make six, and there were only five kills. But <laughs> math notwithstanding, team fight going so far in favor of Dignitas that now, with them being able to pick up not only the damaging items that are going to well hurt Millennium even more. But the tank items are going to be even more important because now Nitrix has Spirit Visage, Sunfire Cape, Merc Treads, and a Doran Shield. If you thought it was hard to kill before, just wait until he comes back into the next team fight. About 2,500 gold onto Alchemist, who is also going to be back, be able to go back and pick up a huge power spike for himself, either in just straight up Void Staff or probably will just finish off that uh, Seraph's Embrace. Notice. But he actually bought Mercury Treads that have been working out really, really well, able to ignore a lot of burst damage from Doigby and just residual damage from the area of effect of team fights, but able to uh, get in, get out, and stay alive at the same time. 304 after a rough start, Alchemist is definitely coming into his own. Yeah, you mentioned that about power spikes and uh, Mercury Treads, so I'd just like to bring your attention to Dignitas UK Samwise. Before that Baron fight, he had Triforce Pickaxe. He now has Triforce, Last Whisper, BF Sword, Mercury Treads. So that was a huge power spike for him, a huge gold spike as well. And suddenly he's gone from being negligible damage to just outright beast mode. And it's going to be very difficult, actually, for the majority of Millennium to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, especially if he gets his five procs of his passive up through a true shot barrage. He's going to be cutting through and melting the likes of Lysandra, Kha'Zix, and also Shen even with all the armor that they possess. And with that sort of, uh, it's more of an ability-based build there from, uh, from, from Samwise. He's got Trinity Force and Last Whisper. If he had built like a Bloodthirster after that, that would have been more of an auto-attack-centric 
kind of focus, but uh, especially with the Last Whisper coming in, expect to see this uh, actually, this BF sword actually go to an Infinity Edge coming out next, because of course, True Shot Barrages, they focus, uh, they uh, they use on hit attacks, that does include being able to crit. So getting in there with, uh, with a much stronger performance, at least in the last team fight over Nanook, Nanook still with that uh, CS advantage, top turret going down, I'm so fresh, gonna make his way uh, back up to there, Impaler waiting on Shlaya, gonna go in, force him right back away. Yeah, and we were asked in chat before that when Thresh is played to just give you guys a rundown on how many stacks, how many souls he has collected. So, to report in, that is 61 souls, which equates to 45 ability power. In fact, all the thought because Kazix has been caught out of top lane. I say that, but it's Kazix, he should be just fine. So going back to what I was originally going to say, that equates now that he got 63 souls to 47.25 bonus armor and ability power. So nice to see the scaling continuing for Dude as he and Doigby will be adventuring down towards the bottom lane. A little bit of an overextension by Impaler, realizes it, will disengage. Join the rest of his team in the bottom side of the jungle. Nitrix recalling from that top lane. Let's see what he picks up. It's going to be wards. So uh, definitely embracing the Season 3 aspect before we hit the Season 4 trinkets and new changes to vision coverage in which we will probably see a whole lot less of this mass ward stacking. You're going to see absolutely everyone with those in their inventory. I'm just curious though now about how Millennium want to approach this because yes, Dignitas UK oh, picked dude. up Baron. Oh dearie me. Well, that's, that's definitely not the way that they want to approach this situation is by losing Thresh for 30 seconds. That is going to spell doom and gloom for this bottom outer tower here, which is going to go down for free. Can they stop another tower from falling though? Oh, Still now it's the Nook Alchemist all oh, over wow. the map. The Nook will get the Shen ultimate. There's the barrier just to keep him alive long enough. There's the Shadow Dash in there. Alchemist still able to pick up the kill. I'm, I have no idea how that went down because he, he was taunted up. So I'm guessing red buff? No, there's no red buff. All right. Well, somehow the Shadow Dash not effective enough there by Shlaya. He might have, uh, Alchemist might have actually gotten out of the Shadow Dash. Haunt duration with those Mercury Treads in time. Now it's bottom lane, Einstein Fresh survives. Doigby looking to escape, the Ignite sticking down. Last auto attack and the damage will be there for Yarrow's Deadly Bloom. Extra Deadly will pick himself up a kill. So, how is that translating in this game? Two towers were picked up, a Baron uh, just recently, and also two, in fact, three kills because Daoud was picked up beforehand. So. You know, Dignitas are again starting to snowball this advantage. 7,000 gold ahead, one tower ahead as well, and a lot of gold on top of that. So going to be going back, and they will finish off that Bloodthirster that you were calling about before on Ezreal's build. So this has just gone from bad to worse for Millennium. They're going to have to dig in deep here, Rapid. The thing that's most concerning for me right now for uh, for Millennium is that not only is the jungle Kazakh starting to hit a stall point, you actually notice that I'm so fresh hasn't bought a single item for the last uh, it's like seven eight minutes almost. So he's still looking for a uh, a, a hex drinker, which should be his next pick up. There it could go for a little bit of extra life steal if he wants to go more of like an area of effect split push uh, build with something like Ravenous Hydra, but I would expect to see that Hex Drinker left to come out as Alchemist just absolutely face stomping people right now. He killed Nanook through Shen Ultimate and Barrier. Uh, it was only level 2 Shen Ult, so not quite as strong as it could have been, but still, if if Alchemist wants to kill somebody, you're gonna be, uh, he, he's gonna like screw up his concoction and actually kill you instead of turning you into gold. <laughs> Yes, definitely. I, I can't really add anything to that rapid. Certainly the case. It looks as though Lissandra is going to be going for the Abyssal Scepter. Next has a Components Blasting Wand and Negatron Cloak. But they are still batting down the door here of Millennium as they pick in the secondary tower as well from mid. And now they're trying to force down the Inhib Tower. And honestly, Millennium just have to play safe. They've got a couple traps down from Caitlyn, which is going to be nice. It's going to come down to, I feel, that taunt from Shed or potentially the death sentence from Dayu to pick it up. Torn comes through, doesn't quite land. 
And for now, Millennium just defending at their base turret. You'll notice I'm so fresh down below half HP. Will have to recall before they fight. If if he doesn't go back to base, he's not really. He's gonna be able to like stall this push for a little bit longer, but will not be able to actually participate in the fight. There's death sentence missing onto Yarrow. Nitrix can just walk up to the turret, and base tank it for now. When Caitlyn traps in the way, he will be taking both of those out with his body. No shadow dash in there to start the taunt. Wave clear is enough from Dignitas, and uh, I guess enough for Millennium too. Keep the turtle alive for now. It's it's a pretty difficult team to actually push against, though, as well, Rapid, because if they're all stood next to a tower, Ezreal doesn't have the longest range as an AD carry, and there's no one else that can really hammer that tower down quick. So it is a case that. You know, Dignitas UK are not the kind of team that can just smash a tower down instantly. If it was the role reversal and they had Caitlyn on their team instead, it would be much easier because Caitlyn can just barrage from a longer range away. Or if that's something like a Kog'Maw, same kind of deal rat or a Trist. But with Ezreal, it's very difficult for Dignitas UK to actually pick up towers where Millennium are covering. I want to point out something. Speaking of coverage, Dignitas with 13 wards on the map right now. Oh, so wow. much vision they can see why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And with Impaler coming out of base with even more wards, a full five stack in his inventory, Dignitas are just going to be able to light up the night down there in uh, in Millennium's jungle, limit their own vision coverage. Now Millennium setting up a pick around the red buff. They know that Samwise is going to come to check that, but they're actually trying to steal it away instead of baiting for that. Samwise was on his way straight to the buff, wisely checks it away, and good steal there for Millennium. But this could be a bit of deja vu here because Millennium have picked up the dragon and now Dignitas are going for the Baron. And Millennium are actually recalling. They have no idea what's going on. They've got no vision and they have all recalled. This is by and large a completely free Baron for Dignitas. Their second consecutive Baron and they're just going to look to push this one home. Dignitas will pick up a free Baron backing, or not backing anywhere. Uh, Millennium backing back to base after picking up a dragon. The dragon gold is going to be nice and everything, but it's not what they need right now. There's actually a last whisper completed for I'm So Fresh. The reason he hadn't bought an item in so long was because he was saving for that last whisper, knowing that while he would be weak while he was saving up, that is an item that he needed if he was going to do absolutely anything in this upcoming fight, especially against like Nitrix, who currently has almost 200 armor. And the armor continuing to be stacked up by, uh, by Impaler, as well with a Warden's Mail in his inventory. I'm so fresh, gonna need a lot of that penetration. And now as Dignitas, considering penetrating the top lane of defenses for Millennium, should see an engage attempt for them as the siege continues. But they are still facing the same issue, that they simply don't have the range to knock down this tower quickly. Ezreal's playing very passive, and smartly so as well, but look at that burst damage! Here comes the Stranglethorns, knocking Doigby into the edge, Ezreal Barrage as well, oh my that kill. God. beautiful smite, double kill from Ezreal as well, could actually go in for a triple or a quadra, but no, Kassadin goes in, Party Poop hits one away, and it looks like it could very well be the full house with three kills to Ezreal, and the double to Kassadin. GG well played coming in, beautiful snipe from Ezreal though, and that strangle thorns was just pixel perfect from Yarrow. And after losing for what it felt like the first 10 minutes of the game, especially at that dragon, or at the, uh, the Baron attempt for Millennium Dignitas, not as, uh, not as afraid of the B word as their North American roster will turn the game around, pick up a double Nexus explosion and 16 to six. 9-3 in turrets will win the best of three semifinals match versus Millennium 2-1.